230 or 237 physicians who signed the statement that they want to back uh, 200 and 300. I, out. I am an addiction psychiatrist. I've been treating people with drug and alcohol problems for the past 26 years. I am not a prohibitionist. In fact, I used to think there was no real difference between alcohol and marijuana. But that was the marijuana of the 60s and the 70s. Um, in fact, when, well, I didn't vote for legalization of mar medical marijuana, but at the time, I wasn't even that concerned about it because I do, do believe there are some benefits of marijuana medically. We don't know what they are, but I think there potentially are. However, I must say that my thinking has changed. And I believe the industry has been totally irresponsible, and our elected officials have been irresponsible not keeping the industry in check. Because what they have done is they have worked really hard at increasing the levels of THC to astronomical proportions. <clears throat> I am not aware of any medical condition that is benefited by high dose THC. And I would love to have someone tell me one that is. <clears throat> All high dose THC does, well, other than getting people high, is it increases the risk of addiction and mental health problems. Anytime you increase the strength of a drug, you increase its addictive potential. This is why heroin was never really made available once it was developed. They very quickly recognized the very powerfully addictive potential of that drug. <coughs> we've seen this with OxyContin, we've seen this with all of the long-acting, higher-dose drugs. They are more addicting. So we have this data that says 10% of the population at most become addicted to marijuana. However, that was based on the 60s and 70s dose of THC. And, and back then it was like 3%, 4%, maybe up to 10%. We are seeing the average THC in our marijuana of 17%. But you can get it in hash oil, shatter, you can get THC up to 90 plus percent THC. And this is what we have available. So the problem is, people only make a drug more addicting in order to make money out of it. And that is what is happening here. So the more people you addict, the more money you can make. I see this no different than the big tobacco. So when, you know, before we mass produced cigarettes, there wasn't near the tobacco addiction, but the companies started mass producing cigarettes and adding all these additives, including ammonia, to increase the absorption of nicotine, making it more addicting. I mean, this is what big companies do in order to make big money. Most people in my field recognize that addiction really, for most people, is a trauma-based illness. Now, people start using a substance for very, very reasons. But people usually continue using a substance because they find it works for them. And what it works for is trauma. It works for people that have had bad life experiences, bad problems in their life. It numbs them. They do not have to think about it, they don't have to feel about it, and they don't care about it. And it works. Marijuana does this. However, I think it is really misguided to think that marijuana treats post-traumatic stress disorder. And I mean treat. This is no different than benzodiazepines. They do not treat PTSD. Opiates do not treat chronic pain. 
All addictive drugs do is mask the symptoms. So they make it so you don't care. The problem is, oh, and it works. I mean, most people that have PTSD, PTSD is, is horrible. It is very traumatizing. People cannot function sometimes. And they find that they can function when they're using the drug. However, they have to take it every single day. Because if they miss it, then the symptoms come back. And it's, not, it's very clear that it's not treated because they still have the PTSD. They still can't do the thing that caused the trauma. They still can't go where the trauma happened. They have to avoid that place, but they can deal with the symptoms. And that is setting that person up for addiction. Because when you use a substance every single day, you're more likely to become addicted to it. And then you have to have it because you have withdrawal. And marijuana has a very distinct withdrawal syndrome. And it happens to people. And so they get very uncomfortable and they have to use the substance. So if you're addicted to it, that's a problem. And then you potentially set yourself up for increased mental health problems. There was really a very excellent observational study done with the veterans uh, through the VA. Uh, it was published in 2015. And this was a, an observational study. The VA is not giving the vets marijuana. But what they are doing is they're treating their PTSD. And so they followed 2,276 veterans. And this is over a nine-year period. So these people are in treatment for PTSD. And then they're following them four months later after treatment, evaluating their symptoms of PTSD based on their marijuana use. And they found that the people that never used marijuana and the people that quit using marijuana in treatment had the most reduced symptoms of PTSD, so they did the best. The people that continued to use marijuana throughout treatment and after didn't have as good an outcome. And the people who started using marijuana after treatment for PTSD had the worst outcomes, and they actually had an increased level of violence. Most people attribute marijuana to chilling and calming down. I think that's probably with the very low level THC and the low level CBD. Maybe. We don't know. The research hasn't been done. But it guaranteed is not with the high dose THC. We are seeing a lot of violence with the high dose uh, THC. So I get um, actually really troubled when I hear veterans say that marijuana is the only option they have for their PTSD. That is so sad. Because we actually in Pueblo have a lot of options for treatment. But what these people are saying is they're concerned that if, so, if, if Pueblo actually voted to get rid of recreational marijuana, they would have no other options. That is horrible because it doesn't treat it. So we have lots of therapists. We have treatment for PTSD, <coughs> excuse me, basically involves therapy. Because what has to happen is the person has to resolve the trauma. It has to be digested in the brain. Because what PTSD is, is that the trauma is stuck in the brain. And it needs to be processed and digested. And, what, and how this happens is through therapy. And there are many effective therapies, many different effective therapies. Some don't even require the person to talk. They don't even have to relive their trauma over and over and over again. This is um, what EMDR is, or eye, eye movement desensitization reprocessing. There's another form called brain synchronization therapy. These are treatments that actually help people resolve trauma without having to relive it over and over and over again. But there are several requirements for the treatment to be effective. Number one, the person has to be clear-minded. That means the person has to be not under the influence of alcohol or drugs. 
And number two, the person has to be calm enough to be able to handle the emotions that come up when you're processing the trauma. Now these therapists that we have in town, and we have many, both in the public sector and the private sector and the VA, we have lots of therapists that are well trained and know skills how to help people calm down. And they have a toolbox, and they can take things out of their toolbox and help people. One of the things that we have increasingly available in this town is a tool called um, the National Acupuncture Detoxification Association. It's a five-point ear acupuncture protocol. It is not a standalone treatment, but it is very helpful calming people down. And we're getting more and more people trained in this because we've had a law change where we can train licensed professionals in the behavioral health care field to do this. Acupuncturists also do this. We actually have several acupuncturists in town that offer free NADA clinics. That stands, NADA is, it sounds like nothing, but it's the National Acupuncture Detoxification Association. They offer free NADA clinics for veterans and their families on a regular basis. So treatment is available. And we do not have to subject people to this treatment that isn't really a treatment. It actually prolongs and makes things worse. And so this is why I just, I, I'm really into educating and I want people to understand. There's a whole lot that people don't really understand about trauma and how it affects the brain. But people can learn and understand that PTSD is actually curable. It is a curable disorder. You do not have to have PTSD the rest of your life. But you can choose to use a drug that masks the symptoms, which will guarantee you will have it the rest of your life. come out wrong won't you help us please help us just to sing along a new redemption song a new redemption song lord we need a new redemption day to come out wrong Won't you help us please Help us just to sing along A new redemption song 